IB students talk all the time about how little sleep they get and how much time they spend studying. Jerry knew the IB was going to be hard, but he procrastinated anyways to try to ignore the impending doom. In fact, IB students talk all the time about how little sleep they get and how much time they spend studying. And then it finally hits him when he has hours of late work. He's behind on his IA, his EE, and all his university applications. He's become a slave to the system and begins sacrificing his precious time studying to make up for the lost work. And he never has the free time he wants. He's working all the time. Always stressed and always busy. Beer. Compared to him, there's beer the ideal IB student. Not only does he have amazing grades and amazing study habits, but he also has great time management skills. Dude's pretty busy on the weekdays, but during the evenings, he has time to read books and exercise. And during the weekends, he's also free. At some point, he used to struggle with his time and was almost always controlled by it. That is, until he realized how he was actually the one in control. So before I took the IB, I was actually told all the time by IB seniors, IB juniors, that the IB would not only be very difficult, but also I would be less Left with basically no free time and that would also get no sleep in fact i even remember when i was in grade 10 it was like the second or third week of school i saw these grade 12 students who just had these huge bags under their eyes and the thing is i recognize those exact same students and i remember seeing them not too long ago maybe like a week and a half ago and they were not looking like that meaning that something happened in the first week or two of the second year of the IB that just completely destroyed their sleep schedule. And it was at that moment that I basically made this commitment with myself that I wouldn't go on in the IB program looking like that. I wouldn't go on into the IB program looking like an IB zombie. But at the time that I did that, I did not think it was possible, right? I saw these people and I'm like, if they're like this, it's probably not possible. In other words, when I saw these people, I looked at them and I'm like, damn, that's probably not possible. These people look much bigger, much smarter than me. What could I do that would avoid that? And then after having gone through the IB and having gotten a perfect 45 score, I can testify and 100% confirm that not only is there a more practical way to go about getting that perfect IB diploma, but you can also do it by getting the amount of sleep that you want and also having free time for literally anything else you want to spend your time doing. People say that I always spend my time working, which is actually kind of true, all right? During the grade 11, grade 12, I spent basically all my time working, but that was my choice, all right? I 100% chose to spend my time working. And by work, I mean basically the businesses and all the other hobbies I was doing outside that most people would say quote unquote work. But I would basically, by the time 6.30 p.m. came on any typical weekday, I was basically done with the IB. I was basically done with any schoolwork, done with any homework that I was to do, done with just the IB in general, just done. And I could spend the rest of my evening, which was until like 9, 30, 10, doing whatever I want, which typically I would just do more business work during that time. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a little bit more of what I did to do that. And I'm gonna approach this from a very different angle, okay? This is probably an angle that you haven't heard in any YouTube video online. I don't think there's anyone on YouTube or online in general that's talking about this specific strategy when it comes to not only the IB, but also just study skills in general. And I think it's going to be immensely valuable. So I urge you to stay throughout this entire video. And plus, I'll be revealing a few Easter eggs throughout. If you know what that is, basically codes you type in and you get these goodies. I'll reveal a few of those throughout the video. Basically, the mindset shift is the following. You need to make yourself care. I want you to actually care about the work that you're doing. All right. And you don't need to care about the actual content itself. Okay. Like maybe you don't care at all about physics and that's okay. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in chemistry that I learned that I did not care about at all. Like I would never use this. I just, I'm like, why am I doing this? Okay. There's a lot of times that that happened, but that didn't stop me from caring. Why is that? It's because there's many different ways that you can care about a certain topic. Okay. You can care about what the topic actually is. In this case, this is basically where most people stop, right? They say you should care about this topic, meaning you should care about math itself, or you should care about chemistry itself, like the actual chemistry. And most people just don't really care about that. So they're, they end up saying, Oh, I can't care about anything. That is not actually true. All right. So the, what that you care about is one brand, but there are many other strands of things that you can care about. For example, you can care about why, why am I doing what I'm doing? That could be a lever of passion. That could be a avenue for you to care. Let's say the work is very tedious and you don't like it, but if the why is strong enough, maybe it's to finally get into that dream university. Maybe it's to achieve extraordinary results in high school for the rest of your life. Maybe it's to finally be the first person in your family who achieves success academically and then in university, or maybe it's simply to get out of pain, right? And struggle. Maybe there's a teacher in your class that's annoying you, whatever the case may be, there is typically a way that you can identify a why 
necessary to the task that you're doing, right? I'll give you the chemistry example. Even though I didn't care about the chemistry itself, I had a strong enough why. I knew that I wanted to live my ideal lifestyle, right? My dream life, however I may define that at the time. I wanted to live that ideal lifestyle. And in order for me to live that ideal lifestyle, I needed to get into my dream university, okay? That was a necessary stepping stone or it greatly accelerated progress towards achieving that I dream, that ideal lifestyle, which I'll talk about in another video. But by knowing that I needed to get into a top university to eventually do something that I cared about, that basically perpetuated and that rippled down from the future all the way until the present as to what do I need to care about right now? And it turns out that doing the chemistry homework is something I need to care about right now. So there's what, there's why, there's also how, like how you do the thing. For example, coding, I don't really like the actual what that I do, meaning I don't really like typing in functions, but the how, the way it makes you think, the way it makes you, if you've ever reached a state of flow with coding, you probably know what I'm talking about, but though when there's many different functions and then many different methods that you're calling and it all just kind of goes together and just create something that works, that's the how, right? Maybe you care about the how, doing a good job with that. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to identify how can I actually care about the IB work that I'm doing, right? How can I care about the homework that I'm doing? How can I care about the IAs? How can I make myself self care because the thing is if you make yourself care you're going to reach states of flow much faster than you otherwise would all right you're quote unquote motivate i don't like talking about motivation but your motivation is going to increase and it's going to be much easier for you to actually get things done and the thing is when you actually have the ability to get things done you actually have the ability to reach states of flow and just execute and finish it off you're able to reach those periods of time where you're in that state of focus which then allows you to get the majority of the work done and then you have those chasms of free time during the day and then in the weekend all right and this is one of the easiest ways that you can make yourself care all right maybe you don't have a what maybe you don't have a how maybe you just don't really care about the why whatever the case may be there's a very easy way that you can make yourself care about the IB or really about anything you do in the future and that is to gamify the entire experience i strongly urge you to gamify the entire IB experience all right the reason Reason why I was able to do hours and hours of math non-stop during the IB, right? And do the past paper questions on repeat like a robot was not because I found it fun. Okay, I didn't find it fun. In fact, it was pretty tedious at times. One of the reasons why I kept doing it was because I gamified that entire process, right? If you saw the IB insane tip video that I released or will release in the future, definitely check that one out. I talk about how I was able to reach a state of flow and then listening to my EDM music allowed me to reach that state of flow, which was essentially what I made me the most happy, just doing great work in a state of flow. Even if it was tedious, even if I didn't really like the math itself, the fact that I was able to do that work in a state of flow allowed me to care and then ultimately allowed me to get those results. So I gamified that by adding EDM music, by scoring myself based on how well I did in the exams, by just doing as much as possible as if I was speed running a video game, right? That's how I made myself care. That's how I gamified the IB experience. Okay. And there's a few ways that you can do this yourself. Number one, add competition. If there's someone else in your class, who's maybe an extremely high achiever who wants to get, do extraordinary things into the IB and beyond. First of all, send them this video. Second of all, sit down with them and then identify how can we compete by compete? I mean, friendly competition. How can we work together to propel ourselves up? And maybe we could add some deadlines. Maybe we can add some targets. Maybe we could do some type of game where the person who does the most pass paper questions, and then there's some type of reward, like maybe it's you go, or maybe there's even a consequence, right? Maybe you go and you do something embarrassing in the talent show, whatever the case may be, there's some way to make this fun, to gamify it, to add some type of competition. And this is something that's lacking, not only in the Ivy, but just in school in general, right? I mean, just think of the grades you get. How long does it take you to get that grade compared to the work you put in, all right? It typically takes months, right? The work I put in right now, the actual studying I'm doing right now is not going to be reflected in my grade in maybe a few months, right? Imagine if you were playing a game of football and then the goal you scored right now wouldn't show up on the leaderboard or on the scoreboard until a few months into the future. Like it doesn't make any sense. So our brains are not meant to play those type of long-term games. We're just not designed that way, evolutionarily speaking. So what I urge you to do is make it very clear, make it tangible how the work you're doing right now is correlated to some type of positive outcome or can even correlate to some type of negative consequence. Although I think the positive one is much more fun for this situation. All right, do what I like to call instant rewards. Gamify the entire process. Maybe go with a friend, just try to beat each other. It is such a good strategy. And I did this with my Chinese score. Okay, I might've mentioned the story before. I was literally getting fours in Chinese sports. <laughs> <laughs> not good. And this was again in grade 10. So before I didn't do the Chinese in IBDB, but in grade 10, I was going forward in my Chinese course. I then did this game where we did like a bet, like a few dollars or something. I don't, I don't even know. It was something dumb. We did a bet with one of my friends where basically bet that I would get a level seven in my Chinese course. Now there was actual stakes. There was actually people watching. It actually mattered. So I went all in for like a week and I managed to get a level seven on this one assignment for Chinese. So this stuff works. The second strategy, apart from instant reward, is to track this with a stopwatch. Okay. This is another way that I gamified the IB and just any work in general. Essentially what you do, and this is one of the biggest reasons why I got a 45 and then got into my top university, is I identified exactly the tasks I wanted to work on, right? These are disproportionate leverage tasks, which I talked about in another video about how to make your time 6.5 million percent 
more productive. Anyways, I identified what those tasks were. And then once I knew what those study tasks were, what those strategies, what those certain extracurriculars of mine were, I then got my stopwatch and I would track the amount of time I spent working on that task. And then every single day was basically a competition to see if I could get up to three to four hours of work on that certain task on that one thing. This works extremely well. All right. Because we all know that kid who says they studied for like six hours. They're like, yeah, I studied six hours or I studied all night or I pulled an all night or I've been working for the past 18 hours. You know that he's not studying for 18 hours, right? Maybe he's does 30 minutes of work and then he gets up, he goes on TikTok and then he does like multitask work. And then he does a little bit here. Like, bro, shut up, man. You're not actually doing 18 hours of work. So what's actually so valuable about the stopwatch is that it allows you to identify how much work you're actually doing. Because what I do is I put it next to me and then every single minute that I'm doing actual focus work, I would turn it off. And then I stop and then I turn it off. And then I do something else. Maybe I go to the washroom. Maybe I go eat a sandwich. Then I come back and I start doing more work and then I turn it back on. This allows me to very concretely understand the actual amount of time that I'm spending in a state of flow rather than just trying to guess. One of the biggest things we talk about here in Grizzly Elite and on this YouTube channel is the importance of clarity. Clarity means clearly understanding what you're trying to achieve, clearly understanding what your goals are, what metrics you're going to use to identify your success. That's why the stopwatch is so incredibly valuable, so important, and ultimately one of the best strategies to completely gamify your IB experience. All right. And then another final way that I'm going to say to gamify this entire experience, and this really ties back to the entire premise of the video, which is how do I have more free time? You set what I like to call a game over time, which simply means, and I learned this by watching a football match in like 2019, something like that it just struck me. Like I was watching the match and I'm like, whoa, in 90 minutes of a football match, the game is over. Okay. There's no more plays. There's no more free kicks. There's no more penalties. There's nothing. Okay. The game is over. It's done, right? There's no more arguing with the ref. It's over. So what I strongly suggest you do is identify when is the game over for you, right? Maybe it's 8 PM. Maybe it's 7 PM. Maybe it's 6 30. Set a time in your calendar when the game is over, meaning you can no longer work after that period of time. Even if it's an emergency, even if it, something comes up, even if whatever, you can no longer do work after a certain period of time. That freed me because I set mine at around like eight, right? Normally I'd be done by like 6.30 doing IB work and then I'd just spend some time doing, but sometimes I'd be done IB work earlier, like at around five. And then I just literally spent all this time working on this extra core regular and I'd go until like 10. And then I just, long story short, I set timer until eight. And then I'll literally spend like an hour reading a book or just going with walk with my dog or just going to the gym, right? Typically I just went to the gym right after. What's most important here is that you identify a time when you're going to stop the match, stop the game. Now, the reason why this works is because leverage is a strategy that I like to call bomb time, which you're basically setting a constraint on your time, meaning your brain knows that by 8 p.m. it can no longer do work. And if you know, I believe it's called Parkinson's law, where the work will fill in the time you allocate towards it, meaning that if you only give yourself until 8 p.m. to finish it done, you're going to figure out a way to get it done by 8 p.m., right? And this is one of the biggest mistakes most students make, and they always question themselves why they don't have enough free time. It's because they give themselves all this amount of time to work. Let's say they give themselves an entire weekend to do this one task, and then instead of actually doing the task to begin with, they either stretch the task out, or they spend half of their time in like this multitasking state where they're kind of checking TikTok, they're also working on the task, and then they just meander around, and then they spend the entire task in nowhere land, doing absolutely nothing. And then by the end of the day, they have basically nothing to show for. Instead, if you set a bomb time, right? Like imagine James Bond is trying to like take down the, like disarm the bomb. That's how I like to think about it. If you set an actual time in the sand that incentivizes you to get it done, you're going to figure out a way to get it done by that time. Okay. Point blank period. So I strongly suggest you do that. You implement this into your own schedule. And then one of the ways I like to do this is just set a timer on your phone or on your computer, meaning that by the time 8 PM reaches, the computer goes out. You can no longer like screen time. You can no longer access your computer and then you're done. All right. It's not up to you. It's not up to whatever it's up to technology, or you can also set it to one of your friends, right? You can tell one of your friends maybe, or one of your siblings, which is what, what I used to do that, or even your mom, like tell your mom, like, Hey, by 8 PM, I need to be done. Take away my computer, whatever the case may be. You can add some type of accountability with that. You can also add accountability and this goes back to the entire gamification aspect, you can add some accountability with your friend that you're competing against or your friendly competing against. All right. So long story short, track the amount of time you spend doing the IV at a game over time. And then that'll allow you to essentially shrink the amount of time that you spend working because you're actually caring about the task that you're doing and you're getting things done. Right. And then finally with that, and we talked a little bit about the stopwatch here, get yourself a stopwatch and track the amount of time you're spending in a state of flow, doing your most important work. All right. Well, I like to call your metric. All right. And then finally comes to actually tracking your vital metrics. I'm going to tell this with a story. 
I like to call this the Fitbit story. Essentially, a company had a competition for the person who took the most steps during a day. So the entire company had a competition where people would take as many steps. They got everyone these Fitbits to track the amount of steps that they take. Was it a Fitbit ad? Maybe. Who knows? Long story short, these people ended up walking around more than ever, right? Why? Because there was an actual competition. There was actual stakes. And most importantly, they had the clarity because of the Fitbit. They could clearly see how much steps they were taking. So by the end of the entire month, people were completely active trying to beat each other out. When people would take calls, instead of sitting down taking a call, people would actually get up and just walk around in circles to get more steps in and then take calls. The fact that there was an entire competition around this, you could clearly see who was winning, you could clearly track it, incentivize people to do the work more effectively, get more things done, and ultimately reach those goals and beat the competition. So long story short, if you want to have all the free time that you want in the IB, first of all, understand that it's possible because most of the time our brain sets limits on us on what we can and cannot achieve. And by you simply believing that it's possible, you're basically one step there. I should be perfect proof that it's possible, okay? Throughout the entire IB, I maybe slept less than eight hours, maybe like 10 times. Very rare that I slept under eight hours. Typically I'd sleep eight and a half to nine. 100% recommended. That's what gave me my clarity to really nail down those assignments at a high quality pace. And then ultimately I urge you to make this mindset shift towards how can I actually care about the thing that I'm doing? And then from that, gamify the entire aspect because that also allows you to care. And then when you do the entire thing, add it in with the stopwatch and with the metric and then add it in with the stop with the game over time and the bomb time, you're going to have a recipe that you need for not only extreme productivity, but also having the free time that you need during the weekends to truly have fun. All right. And myself, I spent all of Sunday skiing with my friends and family. All right, as well as Saturday evening, right after like 5 p.m. or something, Saturday evening, I would just stop working. I would enjoy until like 10 p.m., really just watch a movie, be with my friends, be with my family, go walk with my dog, go to the gym, do all that type of stuff, and then all Sunday as well. All right, so it's 100% possible. Be Bjorn in that sense. If you have any questions at all, please leave them into the comment section down below. And you also just found yourself an Easter egg. This one's a very fun one. It's called Math Q Bank IB. All right, so Math with a capital M, Q, capital Q, then Bank with a capital B, and then IB capital I and capital B, all one word, math, Q bank, IB with those capitals all mashed together. As you can hopefully see in the screen right here, type that into the link in the description down below. And you get access to my EDM study playlist that I use to do as many past paper questions as possible, reach that state of flow and ultimately master the math IB curriculum and then the IB as a whole. All right. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, stay grizzly. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.